impact is huge and teaching people that you care and not doing the marketing of the content, you know, the funnels, there's places and times for everything. Mm -hmm. Just like there's a place and time for the right question. It's not the good question. It's the time you ask it. So it was this whole part of people say, don't give things away free, have all the funnels, market it all over the place. Uh, uh, uh. The more of an expert you are, the more aligned and picky you need to be. And also giving back and truly, truly serving the community you said you serve. Because if you are ever worried about someone stealing something, then you're not an expert. You are not an expert. Hello and welcome to another Top Advisor Marketing Podcast. Now, for those of you who have been following us for a while, you know we don't have repeat guests on often. In fact, I can count on one hand, besides my business partner, Kirk Lowe, who's been on a bunch of these, almost 150, 200, uh, how only one hand of the people who've been uh, repeat guests on the show. And there's only a couple of ways that you get back on the show. Uh, number one, uh, you were the greatest person in the whole wide world on the first show. We want you back, which our guest today qualifies there. Uh, two, uh, really, really, really cool, amazing things have happened since you were on the show, which you check that box too, Kim. Uh, the third thing is what has happened to your company and what you've learned through the startup process and the branding process, which is wildly applicable to this check mark on that one. Uh, and the last thing is, uh, I just love you dearly. So I want to thank you very much for being on the show. Kim Skirmer, everybody. Uh, welcome to the show. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll insert some uh, audience noise there. I yeah, think, as well some audio, about. some some cheering there. Thank you, thank you so much. It's it's awesome to be back. I'm I'm excited. So so much has happened uh, since since you've been on the show, right? So we, we, just a brief history. Uh, the way that uh, Kim and I connected uh, was really through LinkedIn. Uh, we had kind of found each other. She had seen something that I had posted, said, who is this crazy dude? Uh, and then and then it immediately, it was like a friendship. The minute we got on the phone, and I'm not saying that, you know, the only way you get on the show is to be a friend of mine, uh, but you're not just a friend of mine. My partner loves you. My team absolutely loves you. We have lots of mutual connections who just think that you are the bee's knees. Uh, but what has happened? So let's talk about, so you were on the show how long ago? It was, it published, <laughs> I know the date, episode 345. I'm going to get a t-shirt because that was, it rocketed my business. Absolutely did. Episode 345. And it was January 25th. 2021 when it when it went on and that was crazy it was absolutely insane that whole experience from when that show was on and oh just before we jumped on here I took a look at that post when I posted and announced me being on on the, the podcast because I was so important too of when you're on a podcast don't just rely on who interviewed to, to market it like get off your butt and do it and share with your network too and that post got over 5,000 views. Well, I also want to tell everybody the brief story that I love telling about when you were on the show the first time, because you're a very different person than you are right now. Your confidence level is through the roof because you were really nervous to be uh, on the show. Terrified. Absolutely terrified. Actually, after we're going to, uh, I'll probably do it tomorrow. I have the picture from when I was prepping for this podcast because like I hit the big leagues, I'm going, I'm on the Oprah of financial services, right? Like this is crazy to me. And I had notes everywhere, like posted everywhere. Be yourself, shine, all these snippets, all these scripts, right? And this time, like my desk is clean. There's not a note on it. There's nothing. I'm breathing. I'm not sweating. Like it's just, it's incredible what happens too on your journey. And it's been a two year journey. Like it's, it's incredible what happens. Let's unpack that journey. So, yeah. so you were on the show, right? Uh, and it, with, so, so we released the show on, on, on that date, right? Mm -hmm. in, in within 72 hours, you messaged me. So tell, tell, tell our audience a little bit about what happened. I messaged you in 72 hours because you guys actually broke my inbox on LinkedIn. It actually broke. I was bombarded by so many messages. And 
people would think top advisor marketing podcast, you bring experts on, they talk about their niches, what they're really good at. So I'm a business development coach. So I gave some snippets and tidbits on what advisors are missing in their business development and not one message talked about my content. Every message was about the reason why that podcast, I, I'm going to say went viral, like honestly went viral. And it was because I told my story. I was so vulnerable. I was scared, absolutely bleepless, like terrified because I came from this corporate world where you don't share that stuff, right? You don't share that at all. You are not allowed to be vulnerable, which is ridiculous to me because financial services is all about protecting those things we are vulnerable about real life stuff. But every message talked about my story that I shared on their first life, second life. And then the other part of the messages that people were talking about was how I ended the podcast about we all have two dates in common the date we were born and the day we die. And what is important is how are you going to live that dash in between? Mm -hmm. and, and again, it just exploded. Absolutely. So you got a little bit of business and you got a little bit of attention <laughs> from the show. Uh, and I just want everybody to know that, that the show isn't how this happened. It was because of you being on the show you truly unapologetically being yourself and being your own loud because when you were so afraid and you're showing me all of these papers and I'm like, no, you're going to breathe. You need to understand. You don't know me from Adam. In fact, that was probably our fourth or fifth, maybe conversation we'd had up until that point. You still don't know this Muppet guy from Adam. Right. And all of a sudden I'm telling you to trust me. And you did. And you, let you, 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 I loved seeing that flower opening during that show. Yeah. And I love the fact that you talked about the fact that you were from corporate, right? And you weren't allowed to do any of this. And I want everybody to know that when you give permission to somebody to be themselves, everything changes, not just with your relationship, which I'd say our relationship is pretty strong. I mean, I spent hours with you at Jolt, right? Um, but also, you gave yourself permission. And once you give yourself that permission and you feel like, Hey, this is what it's like to be yourself. This is pretty freaking cool, man. <laughs> and so you want to do it more and more, uh, and you have been doing it more and more. So, um, so you did get some clients. Let's talk a little bit about that. Were they the ideal client that you were looking for? Were they terrible people coming in your <laughs> inbox? Let's talk a little bit about that, please. I just want to jump back to, you know, thank you for, saying that, you know, it was me that came up yeah. and brought myself. But this is actually so important for everyone to note and recognize. I researched you. I researched the company. I researched Proudmouth, who you are as a person, all these things. And I was able to trust you because Proudmouth shows up all over the place. And there was an alignment. I was easy to find the alignment because you connected with me. So finding that alignment and that connection brought that trust level to, you know, absolute, absolute skyrocket level. So that was a big thing to notice. And, and, and you know, advisors that you are listening, find your people, mm -hmm. find the right alliances, find your who. So that's a big, big piece that I want to note. But um, from the podcast that I've been able to track, I received 11, 11 clients, 11 inquiries and 11 clients, all of them landed. And actually today, the approach turns two in July. And um, in the two years I've been full out, out to market, I've only lost three proposals. I like that. Yeah, I like that a lot. And there's a big reason why. Well, now you are the queen of business development. I mean, I mean, this is like, you, this is part of who you are. And, and I can't gloss over the fact that you not only are a pro- for approach, but you are a pro who teaches people business development. And mm -hmm. so, so we know that podcasting is a very, very powerful way to help you with business development. And this isn't just a shameless plug for the power of podcasting. Let's talk about how approach has evolved, how you've evolved your biz dev and where you are today, because I want everybody to, to understand 
the essence of this show today, this episode, is for you to understand that as your brand evolves, business development gets easier because you have such a clear message. And Kim, that's something that you specialize in. And I want you to talk about that, please. Mm. It, it's it's so true. So as you as you go through more shows and and you and you practice your language. And I am so successful because everything I teach, I have done. Mm -hmm. Or someone in my community, not my community, my village, my village, because I have a village now. People in my village have done too, and they openly have shared. And that's my job as a business development coach. People think that I've got the magic pill, that I'm going to give scripts, that, you know, all of that kind of stuff. Oh, you're just a coach. Great. Another coach. It is my responsibility, my accountability to know those things very, very deeply that helps advisors, firms, branches, all of the things within financial services that they don't have time to do, that they have no business doing. You need to go be your authority. You need to go be your expert. I'm the who in your life that when we are having a conversation and we're going through something that we think that, okay, you need some networking help. Well, I've attended this conference, this conference, I have this document, this document. I have 23 years mm -hmm. of material to help. I'm not a marketing person, but I talk about marketing a lot because I need to understand it. I'm not a podcaster, but I talk about it a lot because I need to understand it. Being a business development coach and being in business period is about identifying opportunities and connecting directly to the people that you want to bring in. It is that whole change of removing the we's. That was my biggest lesson. Mm -hmm. I talked about we's. We have a problem here. We have this. And my biggest shift actually after the Top Advisor Marketing Podcast was speaking to the you. Mm -hmm. Big, big shift. Anybody listening to this, go back to your media. Go back to anything that you posted. And see how many times you put we or people and you're struggling to stand in your niece, in your expertise, in your authority. Just make that quick change. It's massive. You help so many people make these changes. What are you seeing now? Like, so, so you're two years into this with 23 years experience before you ever hung your own shingle. What are you seeing are the biggest hurdles that advisors need to overcome to successfully grow their practice? Mm -hmm. Two things. They need to scale where everyone else says is unscalable. Mm -hmm. Advisor services is very archaic on the way we do business. And there again are people changing. I think I said this before too, but it's that part of this is your business. You need to be a business owner and you need to stand up completely in your authority on what you're really good at. And it's not a whole bunch of things at all. So I'm seeing that that big opportunity of scaling where everyone says is unscalable. That's huge. That's a huge, huge piece. The other one that I'm seeing is hmm, the ones that actually share who they are with, that don't buy the lead generation marketing stuff, right? Those are the ones that are just kicking it, like absolutely knocking it out of the park. I coach advisors that won't even go to MDRT because they're above that. And I apologize, I don't mean that bad, but mm -hmm. they could be top of the table MDRT level. But they're so entrenched in their expertise and they get their community and their collaboration from somewhere else. So they get their their go go juice and things like that. But they're so focused that something like that seems to be a distraction for them. But they're the ones that are sharing their lives. They're the ones that are telling stories. They're educating. They're entertaining. They're engaging and they're reflecting every 90 days and they're knocking it out of the so the, 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 uh, the scaling, the unscalable, boy, you can't say something like that on a podcast and not expect that I'm on. I want you to unpack that. I need you to unpack that. Then we're going to unpack the second thing that you said. But first, I want to talk about what, what give an example of somebody or something that is unscalable. And I'm air quoting there that mm -hmm. you say, I'm throwing the BS flag that is scalable. Where do you attack that? <laughs> I'll use my example so I don't breach any privacy with sure. myself. Um, 
So very recently, even uh, I put out a business development course. So it's my fundamental course that I teach all that type, you know, things like that. $1,790 is what it was. I had three people sign up for it, which was great. They were the ideal client. And I always do a discovery call. Mm. So when they sign up, I introduce myself. So number one, every business coach out there that I've heard before says, don't do that. Just let them come in, listen, and then sell them and funnel them, blah, blah, blah. Later on, they're going to buy the high ticket thing. Yeah, yeah. So every single one of those pers- people became a one-on-one client. And a one-on-one client. So right now it's June. They're starting their one-on-one uh, coaching with me in January of 2024. <laughs> wow. So that's incredible. And then I'm going, well, I need this. I need these recordings for my PR media agency that I'm working with now because I want to show them how I coach, how I come across, the, you know, helping me with my brand and my niche. So I'm going, forget it. I'm just going to get a hold of a couple of people that I know that that would love to come listen in and been really interested. So I handpicked six individuals who follow me and comment and engage. So I just sent them a note just saying, hey, would you like to be part of this? And they said, yes. And so I said, and is there there anybody else in your community you want to join in on this? Bring them in. So when I did the first meeting, (laughs) the six people turned into 20. (laughs) And then I'm going, okay, I'll split, you know, I want to go send it out again. And I'm just going to anybody else now just open it up. Here's my, here is my everything. Here's my workbook. And I got a hold of other people that are in our industry that service the same advisors. I got a hold of the ones that do the marketing that also talk about unique value products, like all of these things. And I just said, hey, I want to build the community. I want to work with you. Come see what I do. I'm doing this anyways. Come listen in. Mm. And it was so funny that they kind of got quiet. They're going, well, don't you think I'll steal your stuff? Don't care. Don't care. Have it. Come be part of it. You do something really well. I do something really well. Why can't we all work together? And long story short, we have this whole second session has happened and I've got two more clients from the invitees when I gave it away free and didn't pump it. You didn't see it all over LinkedIn. Hey, come to my free thing. No, I very strategically had quiet conversations with people of identify. So the part of scaling when you're at, when it's unscalable, people say, don't give things away free. Don't do that. You need funnels and bring them in and they've got to pay. There's, there's impact. Impact is huge. And teaching people that you care and not doing the marketing of the content, you know, the funnels, there's places and times for everything. Mm -hmm. Just like there's a place and time for the right question. It's not the good question. It's the time you ask it. So it was this whole part of people say, don't give things away free, have all the funnels, market it all over the place. Uh, uh, uh. The more of an expert you are, the more aligned and picky you need to be. And also giving back and truly, truly serving the community you said you serve. Because if you are ever worried about someone stealing something, then you're not an expert. You are not an expert. Ooh, there's the quote of the show right there. (laughs) Holy crap. I hope my marketing team uh, pays attention to that one. That was awesome. Uh, All right. You brought up, I'm going to digress. I was going to go in a different direction, but you just pulled me in in something I think is more fun. So I'm just going to follow. It's my podcast. I can do that. So. So you did this level of transparency with your potential competition yes. or actual competition, actual right? competition, actual, actual competition. You end up getting business from it because of the abundance mindset. Yes. But what I want to take a step back with is, is the PR. Mm. And I didn't talk about this at the top of the show, and I do apologize for to the audience that I didn't preview this at the top of the show, but I want to take a minute and just take a little bit of a step back because of your PR experience and, and what how that PR experience got exposed and what they're saying to you. I think it's important for our audience to hear this because where you're going, I've already heard this story, but where Mm -hmm. you're going and where you just led me to entirely reinforces exactly what you just said there. You are the expert. You have confidence and faith in your expertise. You don't have any direct competition. People are going to buy the Kim's version of this, Mm -hmm. or they're going to buy the Joe's version of this or the Jane's version of this. There's more than enough to go around, but let's talk about you got approached by a rather prestigious PR company. And that's an understatement, just so everybody knows. 
And why, why did they say you have it? What, what, what was the rationale behind them reaching out to you? Oh, I'm going to cry. <laughs> I think it's still really there. Um, first, I was found. They found me on episode 345 of Top Advisor Marketing Podcast a year and a bit after it was aired. Mm. And it was found on YouTube. And when the note came, and it's that moment of, and, and especially right now in society, in business society, women are bombarded bombarded with the pay to play bullshit. Absolutely. And and I get I no joke probably five or six emails a day. Hey, you're great, you're awesome. For only $16,000 of a sponsorship, we'll put you on a fake or you know, magazine and blah blah blah, right? And so when this one came across, <laughs> the the subject line said, "We built Mel Robbins, Grant Cardone, Barbara Walters, and I'm sitting there going, okay, okay, sure. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. And then I started reading and they were picking out elements of my podcast. They were talking about what I talked about, all these things. And they said, and then I went on their website. I'm like, nope, this is real. That's downtown New York. Yep. Yep. This is real. So I just said, for, why not? Just book it. So I, I sent my Kim smart ass response <laughs> and, and it was me. Right. They came back. We had the first meeting. And the funniest part of the first meeting is that I slept through it. I absolutely slept through the biggest opportunity. <laughs> and I slept through the first meeting. And so when I realized I slept through the first meeting, came back to the email, I wrote him a note just saying, and I was honest again, man, I'm so tired. I was having a nap. <laughs> and he's like, you think Mel Robbins is badass. I'm even worse, <laughs> you know, kind of thing. But it's this whole part of that experience of going through it. And when I was talking to them, I kept asking, like, why me? I, 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 I get it. You pick your own people, talent. But why me? Because there's so much of this going out there. I'm not the, no, I'm not the only one that you picked from Proudmouth. Because Proudmouth does an excellent job of vetting their guests. So if I was recruiting and shopping and scouting, that's where I, my mind would go. So I just said, why me? And they said, Kim, you are going to be successful no matter what, if you're not already. Mm. What matters now in the decision you need to make is who's going to be beside you when that time comes. And that hit me upside the head. And that's when I continued the negotiations because I knew that they actually saw who I am. They saw who you are. Guys, and we talk about this so much on the show. You have to give yourself that permission to be yourself and you have to put it out there. Every Everything that, that has happened to you, everything that has happened to the advisors that you work with who allow themselves to really, truly, unapologetically be themselves, mm -hmm. stop buying leads and just put their expertise out there and truly live in their special, unique ability, as Dan Sullivan would say, that's vital. That's vital. And, be, and because of this unbelievable level of sub opportunity. Now, I want to rewind very quickly because I think context is important here. Um, did you do that in corporate? Were you this wonderful human that I see in front of me today, 23 mm -hmm. years in corporate? No, no. I, I want to lie and say yes. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. I would have thrown the flag, sister. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. yeah. I, I really want to lie. But no, I wasn't. I tried to be. There was parts and flits where I attempted to be. But I didn't. I wasn't able to have the impact that I needed to have. And, you know, one day <laughs> there was a massive trigger that I think I still have. <laughs> and it was very interesting. And, and one day I'll probably be on main stage keynote speaking and share a clip of this video. And Matt, I shared it with you. And it was my first coaching session with the big CEOs. So I even went to this part. So the two big CEOs are coaching me. I don't get the, the smaller team. Like they're, this is one day I'll get to share or all you will see where this is going. And I can't wait because it's incredible. And financial services needs this. And he was saying something to me, you're not a business coach. You're not a business coach. And you could see and watch the video. I'm like rubbing my hair back. I'm 
grabbing at my mouth. Like all the indications were there that I was getting pissed and Kim was about to blow. And this came from what you just said about the corporate part of, were you this true authentic person in your corporate world? When he kept saying, you're not a business coach, you're not a business coach. He was trying to say, you are more than a business coach. Mm -hmm. But he was so excited about the opportunity of working with me because he hadn't seen talent like me in years and years and years. And I was so defensive because I'm so used to having to prove myself or MacGyvering things in the background because I wasn't able to show up as my true authentic self for 23 years, right? And and so it's this really interesting clash of the titans where I started screaming and swearing at this poor guy and, and saying everything that really broke my heart in financial services, everything that I vow the rest of my life to work for, I screamed at him about everything. And, and the poor guy afterwards just said, well, thank you very much. Because yep. he didn't know what to say afterwards. Because I just totally convicted. And after we talked later, he goes, I love you even more now. Because I know 100% unquestionably yeah. that you are this person you say you are. You are in this in financial services truly to help the industry. Yeah. And I absolutely loved watching that. I loved watching it because I've never seen you really get upset, which was fantastic. Because I mean, how often, you know, you're yeah. usually on the receiving end of that. And I oh, would not yeah. want to be. But I do have to say that what was fascinating to me was his level of calm. Oh, it was crazy. Right. It was, it was like he was like, he was so in the moment in trying to connect with you in that moment yeah. that there is no deeper, quicker, faster, stronger way to build a relationship with somebody than sitting with them in that level of frustration and actually listening, which he did. Yeah. And I want to package a little bit of this up because there's a lot going on here and I want to make sure everybody gleans what I'm trying to, to, to highlight here. So many of you for 20 plus years have been somebody else. And you know what? You're not getting any younger. So just cut it out. Just, and also I want you to know that who they're buying and what they're buying is you. They're buying you. They're buying the essence of the brand that you're putting forth. And if you don't know how to communicate the essence of that brand, Kim can help you with that too. Because if you are truly going to be the greatest person with business development, you need to have your messages totally dialed in, yeah. right? You absolutely do. Now, as we wrap up the show today, you said something to me recently um, that I want everybody to hear. So many financial advisors understand to their core that they are alone on an island. Okay. Mm -hmm. But not only the, are they alone on an island, but there's a storm coming or <laughs> there's been a storm and they are just getting beaten around. They're getting thrashed around. They can't feel like they're getting ahead because they're constantly having to deal with the storm. And part of the evolution of your approach coaching method and Kim Skirmer's brand kind of was able to be distilled in a sentence. And I'd like you to share that sentence with our audience, please. Mm -hmm. My evolution has come down to this because it truly is when you're an expert, it all leads to one thing. And it is find the eye and find the calm. Live your defined success. And that exactly is it. We're all in this storm. And the calmest place of the storm is in the eye of the storm. There you can actually watch and work with strategic intent. So, yeah, I love it. I love it. It's it's going to be amazing to watch that unfold. And I thank you very much for sharing that. So that's not where Kim Scart started, by the way, when I first <laughs> met with her and she were talking about her brand and who she is as a coach and all of yeah. this sort of stuff. And, yeah. and we just had a meeting recently, last week or the week before, and you said that to me. And so yeah. I want everybody to know branding is an iterative process. Yes. And there will be times where you land on something and you're like, damn, there it is. Right. Mm -hmm. But then guess what? That's damn. There it is where you are today. Yeah. 
And as you continue to develop and you hone your expertise and you live in that comfort zone, which many of my listeners don't live in, when you give yourself permission to live in that comfort zone, unbelievably amazing things happen. Like, like that, that, that message that you just shared yeah. there. Yeah. All right. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. I just want to share something very, very, very quickly. And it, and it is that whole part of what you just said. And I want advisors to take this away because they're in such a hurry to get to the expertise. I have re rebranded quote unquote, I've evolved three times in the last two years. And that's massive. I have the approach, I have RST, I have BizViz, I had all these things. And the first thing that the PR company said to me was, get rid of all that crap, the brand is Kim Skirmer. That's the brand, everything. And that was really hard for me to understand. I felt egotistical, but it's not. I'm a damn good coach for the right advisor, for the right firm and company. And the last thing I just want to sneak in there really quick and something you said was, the advisors that are so afraid to get on and talk about their authentic self, the social media, all the, the younger advisors, ones that are coming in, I'm not so worried about them. <laughs> like it's, it's nothing. The ones that are, you know, 45-ish and up, I'm going to say this to you. Stop being so damn afraid. You're older. You've been in business longer than Google. Think about that, <laughs> okay? <laughs> so if you're afraid, you've been around longer than Google, and everyone takes wisdom from that. Why not take it from you? Yeah. All right. My favorite question to ask him is, what should I have asked you that I didn't? It was all worth it because. There you go. All right. <laughs> There you go. Yeah. Just so everybody knows, she asked me that question recently and I started crying. And so we'll see how Kim answers her own make Matt cry question. So, all right. I, okay. I, I did lie at the beginning too. I did prepare one thing because I thought just in case he throws it back at me, <laughs> but it actually, I do think it's really important. And I'm, I'm going to end this one with a point of confidence. And it's something that we all know. And it's, I'm no longer just getting invited to the party. I am being asked to dance at the party. Mm -hmm. And I'm being asked to dance with partners that we actually are in rhythm with, that I am aligned with, and that I'm living my best life and my best life in joy just because I am 100% me, my true authentic self. So that's a really, really big change. I am sure that people are going to want to reach out to you. What's the best way for them to connect with you? Best place on LinkedIn. So Kim Skirmer or on Instagram, there's going to be a lot of content coming out, really good snippets every day, and it'll help you build and build and build. So find me there, please. Fantastic. Kim, you're the best. I'm so happy to know you. Thank you for being in my life. Thank you for sharing your wisdom with our audience. Uh, listen, everybody. Um, unapologetically being yourself is not something that's easy. And we're not saying it is. It's a process. It's a journey. But here's the deal. Once you start feeling like you're getting there, the momentum takes over. And we know that in the world of marketing, momentum is the most important thing for you to get. But even more important than that is to truly hone your message so that you can communicate that real difference between you and the advisor down the street. And if you want to have somebody who can help you, even though you might have to start in January of next year, please well, make sure you reach now. Out. <laughs> it's May now. All right. Then you need to reach out to Kim and make sure you connect with her on social. All right. So for Kim Skirmer and all of us here at Proudmouth, this is Matt Halloran, and we'll see you on the other side of the mic very soon. Uh -huh.